let's talk about the, I love talking about the Fermi paradox because there is no Fermi paradox. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. So the Fermi paradox, let's talk a little about the Fermi paradox and the history of it. Um, so, uh, uh, Enrico Fermi, it's 1950. He's walking with his friends at Los Alamos nuclear weapons lab to the cantina. And there had been this, um, cartoon in the New Yorker. They all read the New Yorker. Uh, and the cartoon was trying to explain why there had been this rash of, uh, uh garbage cans being disappearing in New York. And this cartoon said, oh, it's UFOs. Cause this is already, you know, it's 1950. The first big UFO craze happened in 47. So they'd all, they were laughing about this as they're walking and they started being physicists, started talking about interstellar travel, interstellar propulsion, blah, blah, blah. You know, conversation goes on for a while. Conversation turns to something else, you know, they've gone to other things. About 40 minutes later, over lunch, Fermi blurts out, well, where is everybody? Right? Typical Fermi sort of thing. He'd done the calculation in his head and he suddenly realized that, look, if one, if there, you know, if intelligence is common, that even traveling at sublight speeds, a, uh, a civilization could cross, you know, kind of hop from one star system to the other and spread out across the entire galaxy in a few hundred thousand years.